When we think of space flight, we think astronauts. You're a human. You perceive the universe with your human-centric attitudes, you speciest. The reality is that the vast number of living things sent to space were our animal buddies. This is a tough topic to hit. It's kind of sad. So the more sensitive animal-loving viewers might want to skip this one, or at least grab some tissue. Just, just don't shoot the messenger. So we've thrown so many different kinds of animals into space. A better question might be, what animals haven't been to space? Ostriches, elephants, unicorns. It's a Noah's Ark salad of living things. Mice, monkeys, fish, reptiles, frogs, insects, dogs, and of course, those hardy hardy tardigrades, who laugh at the rigors of space flight and eat vacuum for breakfast. We brought them all home safe and sound. Well, some of them. I mean, a good number of them. All the tardigrades are fine, I think. So at the beginning of the space age, scientists sent a series of animals in high altitude balloons to test the physical demands of space flight. Scientists had no idea whether creatures could even survive high altitude or radiation. So they sent insects, mammals, and even primates nearly halfway to space. It's how we roll. Mostly, we make all kinds of weird assumptions about what might happen, and really, it's better to just send a handful of bugs than a person. So when we first worked out flight, there were the concerns that all the air would get sucked out of our lungs and we'd just pass out. So sometimes we get a little freaked out. So this high altitude business all seemed to go well enough. So they packed the poor creatures, I mean our brave animal adventurer friends, into leftover German V2 rockets and fired them on ballistic trajectories, including a few monkeys. Now the Soviets, ooh, the Soviets, were the first to send dogs into space with Saigon and Desik. They didn't actually reach orbit, but were both brought home safely. Good dogs! Here's the one you're waiting for. Laika was launched aboard the second spacecraft to ever orbit the Earth, Sputnik 2, on November 3, 1957. Now at that point, scientists weren't even sure humans could survive spaceflight, or if we just dissolve after soiling our space pantaloons. Oh, you fragile humans. Soviets chose the toughest dog they could find. A stray mutt they found living on the streets of Moscow. You just can't make this stuff up. Well, I could. If I did, I'd make it more like they went to the toughest dog bar in all of Moscow and met the bouncer, Laika, at a high-stakes winner-take-all poker-slash-Russian roulette game for all the bones in a dark, smoky doghouse in the back. Now, originally, it was reported that Laika lasted six days in orbit, but in 2002, it was uncovered that she actually died shortly after launch. Either way, Laika was doomed as technology to recover a capsule from space was still a few years off. Apparently, there was some kind of race on. Five months after launch, Sputnik 2 burned up in the Earth's atmosphere, and Laika's name still lives on to this day in legend. So in the 50s and 60s, there was a whole series of monkeys sent to space. A third survived their flights and went on to live long monkey lives, reminiscing about their days of monkey glory, hanging out in the primate version of that bar in the right stuff. In 1961, Ham the Chimp was sent into space aboard a Mercury Redstone rocket. Ham was trained to believe he was flying the spacecraft. The brave little tyke demonstrated that human astronauts could do the same as long as they were rewarded with fruit. Three months later, Alan Shepard followed in Ham's footsteps, becoming the first American in space. Now, whether the Fruit Rewards program was retained is classified. So from that point on, it was a river of living things traveling into space. Crickets, ants, spiders, newts, frogs, fish, jellyfish, sea urchins, snails, and shrimp. Even cockroaches. Seriously, somebody thought that it would be a good idea. I suspect it was part of some kind of secret atomic super roach program. One of the most poignant stories of animals traveling to space has got to be the nematode worms that flew to orbit with the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003. When the shuttle tore up on re-entry, killing all seven astronauts, the nematode worms survived the re-entry and crash landing. Now there were 60 other science experiments on board Columbia, many of which included animals, fish, insects, spiders, bees, even silkworms but only the nematodes survived. But it wasn't the originals they found. Nematodes have a life cycle of seven to 10 days. So the ones they discovered were probably fifth generation removed from the initial space skateers. As you can see, we aren't the only creatures to go into space. In fact, we're the minority. Space belongs to the tardigrades, mice and nematode worms. 
and I, for one, welcome our horrible water bear overloads. Okay, I'm gonna brace myself for this one. Do you think it's ethical to use animals in spaceflight? Tell us your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. And our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Ross Daniels and Alexander Rakowski and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. We're the first to send dogs into space. Space?